Hi. Um, let's talk about why you can't get a settlement for your injury. Okay. Or a makeshift settlement if it's after um, the statue or something like that. Now, um, I have some experience with this <coughs> because I've been going through some things. Um, I have known other women in the past who have been through the same thing. And um, when you get to be a certain age, you kind of like catch on to things. You're going to your doctor's appointments. Um, you, you're in a more sensitive state. You will overhear people talking. Um, and you kind of, you kind of piece it together. And basically, you know, your regular doctor appointments, they will kind of, um, lead you on, lead you to believe that, yeah, you're, you're gonna get one. And then, um, you go to a bunch of appointments and have all kinds of tests done, or brain scans or heart tests or whatever. Um, and they'll space out the appointments. Um, well, we don't have anything until two months or whatever. Um, it, it's just kind of like kicking the can down the road for um, indefinitely a long time until the uh, statute expires. So that happens a lot. Um, and basically there are people who get help. Um, I know like from, from women's perspective and it's usually like, they're usually like hotter, like hotter, thinner, taller, whatever the case, prettier, um, uh, things like that. Um, so this is gonna be, this is hard to deal with. This is hard to deal with, especially if you have, I can't remember if I already made a video about this seems familiar. <laughs> if you have some temporal lobe epilepsy, um, which I do because I had a T-clip surgery and it got worse. Had it already, but it got worse. <sighs> um, if you have some epilepsy like that and you're going through, you're noticing through your emotions and things and stresses throughout the month and it's literally like you're just getting whacked in the head with stress um so doctors will like throw all kinds of distractions your way and you know they'll just make you think like you have to be better hotter um thinner um whatever the case so you can go out there and uh, exercise and try and um, try to be the best you can be. Try to dress hot. Try to look like you're worthy, you know. And then the whole concept of feeling like you have to be good enough, affluent enough, worthy enough. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. It could also be... Um, a bit of a distraction, an agonizing, annoying distraction, because you're trying to process in your head, am I ever going to be able to be good enough um, to get helped? And it's freaking exhausting. And if you have a family to take care of and you're trying to function, um, it's like you can't just ignore it and let it go, um, especially if your ego has been injured. Like, you're not hot enough. Sorry. <laughs> it's kind of like, for women, it's kind of feels like whammy, ow. Um, big time. Um, so that, that can be, that can be difficult. Um, Doctors will try to set up, play like this goalpost 
kind of system where you have to chase after your goals. You have to meet your goals. Um, if you're hot enough, if they like you enough, if whatever the case, if you're just one of those charismatic, likable people, um, your goals or goalposts are going to stay stationary. You'll be able to reach and achieve those goals. Um, if they don't want to help you, then those goal posts are going to move further and further away, <laughs> this way, that way, further away, and you're never going to be able to, um, reach those goals. Or, um, as you do, like, the reward gets smaller, or they look for, um, scapegoats or whatever, or, oh, but she doesn't need it that much, or, oh, her, uh, injuries or from other things, or she was already like that, or whatever they want to say. Um, this can be extremely painful and frustrating. Um, sometimes it's like you're feeling a uh, heart strain, um, low, uh, kind of like a little bit of heart attack, seizure, stroke, heart attack, uh, type of feelings. And then when you're stronger, um, you still feel your epilepsy, but it's more like you're angry, you're, you have more, maybe your adrenaline's working better or something. And you get, you get upset and angry that you have these issues and you, you just can't get help because it's like you need a more, a more comfortable life. But there's this annoying common perception of what that is. And a lot of people think of a more comfortable life as like dressing nice and going to nice places and, you know, moving up in society and all this great stuff or whatever. But, um, or status symbols, you know, things like that. Um, but like when you're, I don't know, maybe it can do some good to try to make some clear distinction between, um, physical comforts and, uh, ego comforts. Um, I think that having some ego comforts could help a person to, um, kind of warm their heart to feel better. Um, I would, I would want physical comforts because, you know, if you have those ego comforts, well then it's like people are going to think you're a snob, you know, even more. And that, that's not fun. Um, Jesus. Um, physical comforts, you know, like not so much like, oh, I'm, I can be hot enough to be worth this certain amount of money or whatever. Or my, my, I'm hot enough that my injury matters, you know, and then, and then your, her ego is bashing you in the head more. <laughs> That's not fun. So it's like, what do you really need and what would really benefit you? Um, what would help your condition to be able to have a more comfortable life? Um, if that makes any kind of sense, um, may, maybe, maybe that can help if you're talking to your doctor and you're trying to see if they can help you somehow. Um, maybe because when, when you know you are injured and you are feeling that strain, that fatigue, um, 
what what is there what what can you do you know it's it can be hard if you get out there and hustle it can be hard it can be hard um exhausting hard um you know um i just don't know i just don't know um and then not being able to get clear, definite answers or solutions for your health condition is also very frustrating, being left on your own to try to figure it out. Well, they do endless tests or this or that or different specialists, and you just feel like you're getting nowhere. You're getting no clear answers, really. Um, good grief. Um, gotta find help somehow, that's for sure. Um, don't know. I mean, I, I hope that this can help you if you go through these similar things. Um, it is so hard to not be focused on it. And, you know, doctors know, I've even heard some say, well, yeah, you know, and then the issue goes away. Um, this can anger a person, like, I'm not stupid, I know what you're up to, da, da, da. You're, <laughs> you know, you can react like that, um, and then they're like, oh, this mean, angry person, they're borderline personality disorder, or whatever, like, you're just not getting helped, and that tends to, it tends to piss off a person. At a certain point, you know, somebody can only take so much. Um, it, it can be really tough to deal with, I know. Um, I hope you can find help. I hope you can figure out how to reason with your doctor and get them to help you. And not just treat you like some crazy schizo putting on a show. You know, being a schizo is part of having a heart condition and brain injury. It's part of it. So, you know, it's just the way it is. Um, I hope you can find help. Uh.